السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو دا امریکا ایٹ ایج پلیٹ فارم ایج اکیڈمی ہاں ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں ہم لیکچرز بھی اپلوڈ کر رہے ہیں اور شارٹ ٹپس اینڈ ٹرکس بھی ساتھ ساتھ اپلوڈ کی جا رہی ہیں تو آج آپ لوگوں کا لیکچرز ہوگا وہ یعنی ون شارٹ لیکچر ہوگا آرگینک کیمسٹری کی تمام ریئیکشن ٹھیک ہے ان کو ایک ہی جگہ پہ سمایا جا رہا ہے ان کو ایک ہی جگہ پہ اکٹھا کیا جا رہا ہے تو ان کو نہ آپ نے کورس سے دیکھنا ہے بلکہ نہ اس کے نہ نوٹس بنا لینا ہے اس کا فائدہ یہ ہو جائے گا جب آپ کے ایگزام قریب ہوں گے تو آپ انہیں جلد از جلد دیکھ کے نا اپنے کنسیپٹ کلیئر کر سکتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے تو چلیں دیکھیں اس کو I will teach you all important organic tests. First of all, let me teach you the test for unsaturated organic compounds. The first test is bromine water test. It is given by both alkenes and alkynes. The reagent of this test is bromine plus water. Let's consider an alkene. Now when bromine water is added to it, the double bond breaks. We get CH2, CH2, Br and Br. As a result of this reaction, the reddish brown color of bromine water disappear. The second test for unsaturation is Beer's test. It is given by both alkene and alkynes. The reagent of this test is dilute alkaline KMnO4. For example, consider this alkene. When dilute alkaline KMnO4 is added to it, the double bonds break. We get CH2, CH2, OH and OH are diol. As a result of this reaction, the purple color of dilute alkaline KMnO4 changes to colorless. The third test for unsaturation is Tollens test. Remember that this test is given by only terminal alkynes. By terminal alkynes, all those alkynes which have at least one hydrogen atom bonded to a triply bonded carbon atom. The general formula is RC triple bond CH. It is a terminal alkyne because the triple bonded carbon atom has one hydrogen. Now the reagent of this test is silver nitrate plus ammonium hydroxide. For example, consider terminal alkyne. Now silver nitrate plus ammonium hydroxide is added to it. Here the silver displaces the hydrogen of terminal alkynes. And we get this compound which is known as silver alkenide. As a result of this reaction, white PPT of silver alkenide is produced. Remember that the second reagent of Tollens test is copper chloride plus ammonium hydroxide. In case of this reagent, red precipitate is formed. Therefore, remember that for unsaturations like alkene and alkynes, we carry three important tests. The first one is bromine water test, the second one is Beer's test, and the third one is Tollens test. In the bromine water test, the reddish brown color changes to colorless. In Beer's test, the purple color of dilute alkaline KMnO4 changes to colorless. And in Tollen test, white precipitate of silver alkenite, a red precipitate of copper alkenite is formed. Hence noted down these important tests. Now we will learn the test for alkyl halides. The first test is alcoholic silver nitrate test. The reagent of this test is alcoholic silver nitrate. For example, consider an alkyl halide. Now I add alcoholic silver nitrate. Here nitrate and halogens are interchanged. I get RONO2 plus silver halide. As a result of this reaction, white precipitate or yellow precipitate of silver halide is formed. Thus remember that we use alcoholic silver nitrate to identify alkyl halides. Now we will learn test for alcohols. The first one is Ceric Ammonium Nitrate Test or CAN test. This test is given by all alcohols. The reagent of this test is ceric ammonium nitrate. For example, consider this ROH. Here, ceric ammonium nitrate is added to it. We get this complex compound and ammonium nitrate. As a result of this reaction, a red complex is formed. The second test is Lucas test. This test is used to differentiate first degree, second degree and third degree alcohols. The reagent used in this reaction is HCl plus anhydrase zinc chloride. For example, consider first degree. Here, I add HCl plus anhydrase zinc chloride to it. I get alkyl halide. As a result of this reaction, no turbidity is formed. Secondly, I add HCl plus anhydrase zinc chloride to secondary alcohol. I get alkyl halide. As a result of this reaction, turbidity is formed after 5 minutes. Thirdly, I add HCl plus anhydrase zinc chloride to tertiary alcohol. I get alkyl halides. As a result of this reaction, turbidity is immediately formed. Therefore, remember that we carry two important tests to identify alcohols. The first one is CAN test, arsenic ammonium nitrate test. And the second one is Lucas test. In CAN test, red colored complex is formed. While in Lucas test, no turbidity means primary alcohol, turbidity after 5 minutes means secondary alcohol, and immediate turbidity means tertiary alcohols. Hence, note it down this important test. Now we will learn test for phenols. The first test for phenol is ferric chloride test. It is given by all phenols. The reagent of this test is ferric chloride. 
For example, consider this phenol. I add ferric chloride to it. I get this ferric complex plus HCl. As a result of this reaction, voilet complex is formed. The second test is azu dye test. This test is also given by the phenols. The reagent of this test is benzene disonium chloride. For example, consider phenol. Here, I add benzene disonium chloride. This hydrogen and chlorine reacts together to form HCl. The remaining reactants combine together to form this product. As a result of this reaction, orange color compound is formed. The third test to check for phenol is bromine water test. It is also given by the phenols. The reagent of this test is bromine plus water. For example, consider phenol. I add bromine plus water to it. I get this bromophenol. As a result of this reaction, white precipitate of bromophenol is formed. Therefore, remember that we carry three different tests to identify phenols. The first one is ferric chloride test. The second one is azudi test. The third one is bromine water test. In the ferric chloride test, violet complex is formed. In the azudi test, orange color compound is formed. While in bromine water test, white precipitate is formed. Hence, note down these important tests. Now we will learn test for aldehydes. The first test to identify aldehyde is Tollens test. This test is given by both aliphatic and aromatic aldehydes. The reagent of this test is silver nitride plus ammonium hydroxide. For example, consider this aldehyde. I add silver nitride plus ammonium hydroxide to it. The aldehyde oxidizes to carboxylic acid plus ammonia plus water and silver is also produced. As a result of this reaction, white precipitate of silver is formed. Remember that we also call this white precipitate as silver mirror. The second test for aldehyde is Fillings test. It is given by aliphatic aldehydes. The reagent of this test is aqueous copper sulfate plus sodium tartrate. For example, consider this aldehyde. We add aqueous copper sulfate plus sodium tartrate. The aldehyde oxidizes to carboxylic acid plus copper oxide. As a result of this reaction, brown precipitate of copper oxide is formed. The third test is Benedict test. This test is given by aliphatic aldehydes. The reagent of this test is aqueous copper sulfate plus sodium citrate. For example, consider this aldehyde. I add aqueous copper sulfate plus sodium citrate. Here, the aldehyde is oxidized to carboxylic acid plus copper oxide. As a result of this reaction, red-brown precipitate of copper oxide is formed. Therefore, remember that we carry three different tests for aldehydes. The first one is Tollens test, the second one is Fillings test, and the third one is Benedict test. In the Tollens test, white precipitate or silver mirror is produced. In the Fillings test, a red-brown precipitate of copper oxide is produced. While in the Benedict test, a red-brown precipitate of copper oxide is produced. Hence, noted down this important test. Now, we will learn test for ketones. The first test for ketone is heliform or iodoform test. This test is given by ketones. The reagent of this test is halogen like iodine and sodium hydroxide. For example, consider a ketone. I add iodine plus sodium hydroxide to it. I get a salt of carboxylic acid plus heliform CHI3. As a result of this reaction, yellow precipitate of iodoform is formed. The second test for ketones is DNP test. This test is given by both ketones and aldehydes. The reagent of this test is 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine. For example, consider this ketone. I add DNP to it. This H2 and oxygen of ketones react together to form H2O. The remaining reactants combine together to form 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazone. As a result of this reaction, your precipitate or yellow, orange, red precipitate of 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazone is formed. Therefore, remember that there are two tests to identify ketones. The first one is heliform or iodoform test. The second one is DNP test. In heliform or iodoform test, yellow precipitate of iodoform is produced. In DNP test, your precipitate is formed. I mean, yellow, orange or red precipitate of 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazone is formed. Hence, noted down this important test. Now, we will learn test for carboxylic acid. There is only one test to identify carboxylic acid. This test is sodium bicarbonate test. It is given by all carboxylic acids. The reagent of this test is sodium bicarbonate. For example, consider this carboxylic acid. I add sodium bicarbonate to it. We know that a salt of carboxylic acid is formed plus carbon dioxide gas plus water is also formed. As a result of this reaction, brisk effervescence is produced. Thus remember that we carry sodium bicarbonate test for carboxylic acid. In this test, we get brisk effervescence of carbon dioxide gas. Hence, note it down. Now, we will learn test for amines. The first one is carbyl amine test. Remember that this test is given by 1 degree amine. 
The reagent of this test is CHCl3 plus alcoholic potassium hydroxide. For example, consider 1 degree amine. I add CHCl3 plus alcoholic potassium hydroxide. I get isocyanide. As a result of this reaction, very bad smell is produced. The second test is azo dye test. It is given by aniline. The reagent of this test is benzene disonium chloride. For example, consider this aniline. I add benzene disonium chloride to it. This hydrogen and chlorine react together to form HCl. The remaining reactants combine together to form this compound of para-amino-azobenzene. As a result of this reaction, yellow dye of para-amino-benzene is formed. The third test for amine is Hinsberg's test. This test is used to differentiate between first degree, second degree and third degree amines. The reagent of this test is benzene sulfonyl chloride. Let's consider first degree, second degree and third degree amines. Here, I add benzene sulfonyl chloride to first degree amine. This hydrogen and chlorine react together to form HCl. I get an alkyl benzene sulfon amide. Secondly, I add alkali like potassium hydroxide to it. We can see that an alkaline benzene sulfon amide is soluble in alkali. In case of second degree, I add benzene sulfonyl chloride to it. I get an N dialkyl benzene sulfon amide. Secondly, I add alkali like potassium hydroxide to it. We can observe that this compound is not soluble in it. In case of third degree, I add benzene sulfonyl chloride to it. We can see that no reaction occur. Therefore, remember that we carry three different tests for amines. The first one is carbyl amine test, the second one is SU dye test, and the third one is Hensberg's test. In carbyl amine test, one degree amine gives bad smell. In SU dye test, yellow dye is formed. In Hensberg test, the first degree amine is treated with benzene sulfonyl chloride and the product is soluble in aqueous potassium hydroxide or alkali. The second degree amine is treated with benzene sulfonyl chloride and the product is insoluble in aqueous potassium hydroxide or alkali. While in case of third degree amine, it doesn't react with benzene sulfonyl chloride. Hence noted down this important test. Now we will learn test for carbohydrates. The first one is Molish test. It is given by carbohydrates. The reagent of this test is 1% solution of alpha nephthol and ethanol. For example, consider this carbohydrates. I add molish reagent to it. A purple ring at the junction or boundary of the two liquids is formed. Secondly, if the purple ring quickly forms, it is monosaccharide. If the purple ring forms slowly, it is a di or polysaccharide. The second test is Selivinov's test. This test differentiates ketosis and aldoses. The reagent of this test is resorcinol. Firstly, the given symbols of carbohydrate is acidified. Secondly, resorcinol is added and the mixture is boiled for 2 minutes. If we get red color, it is ketohexose. If we get blue color, it is ketopentose. If we get no color, it is aldose. The third test for carbohydrates is Belfort test. This test is used to distinguish monosaccharides and disaccharides. The reagent of this test is copper sulfate plus acetic acid. For example, consider carbohydrates. I add the reagent to it. I get brick red precipitate. If red precipitate is formed fast, it is a monosaccharide. If red precipitate is formed slow, it is a disaccharide. Therefore, remember that we carry three different tests to identify carbohydrates. The first one is Molish test. The second one is Selivinov's test. And the third one is Barefoot test. In the first test, if purple ring at the junction of the two liquid is quickly formed, it is monosaccharide. If the purple ring is slowly formed, it is di or polysaccharide. In the second test, the acidified symbol of carbohydrate is heated with resorcinol for 2 minutes. If we get a red color, it is ketohexose. If we get blue color, it is ketopentose. If we get no color, it is aldose. In the third case, copper sulfate plus acetic acid is added to carbohydrate. If we get a red precipitate quickly, it is monosaccharide. If we get a red precipitate slowly, it is a disaccharide. Hence noted down this important test. Finally, let me teach you the test for proteins. The first one is Bayer test. It is given by all proteins. The reagent of this test is solution of sodium hydroxide plus 1 to 2 drops of copper sulfate solution. For example, consider this protein. I add reagent to it. I get violet color. The second test is Xenoprotec test. It is given by proteins which has aromatic amino acid. Its reagent is HNO3. For example, consider this protein. I add nitric acid to it. I get white precipitate. I boil this white precipitate. After boiling, I get yellow color. Finally, I add alkali to it and I cool it down. I get orange color. 
The third test is ninhydrin test. It is given by all proteins. Its reagent is dilute solution of ninhydrin. For example, consider this protein. I add ninhydrin reagent to it. I get Rohimans purple color. Therefore, remember that we carry three different tests for proteins. The first one is bio test. The second one is synthoprotic test. And the third one is ninhydrin test. In the first test, after adding reagent, we get a violet color. In the second test, aromatic amino acid gives white precipitate. In the third test, ninhydrin is added to protein. We get Ruhiman's purple color. Thus, these are the all important organic tests.